Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. <laughs> we'll start shortly, so uh, let's wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join. Uh, I really want to make sure you uh, can see and hear me well, so please send your favorite emoji in the chat. Yeah, great, awesome. <laughs> Awesome, we've successfully passed the sound check. Uh, so first, let me introduce myself. My name is Anna and I'm a marketing manager at Uscan, an IT company which develops a social listening tool with uh, advanced capabilities for text analysis of social media posts along with visuals and audience characteristics. And I'll be moderating our webinar today. <laughs> yeah, hi, hi everyone. <laughs> Uh, I'm super excited that we are gathering today to explore one of the most uh, engaging trends and uh, community on TikTok with an amazing and skilled social listening expert, Kim Townend. So this webinar is recorded. So after uh, we will finish, you'll receive the copy of our today's meeting. So you'll be able to review it and share it with your colleagues. Uh, also, our webinar will last uh, for one hour, and uh, with the last 15 or 20 minutes, uh, we will discuss your questions. So uh, whenever you have some questions, you can put it in the chat. Uh, I think that's it from my side uh, for now. So I'm happy uh, to pass the mic to Yuskan's friend, our ambassador, a social media listening and strategy expert, Kim Townend. <laughs> yeah, welcome, Kim. Thanks, Anna. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm just going to get into it because there's a ton of data for us to get through. So one very quick slide about who I am so you understand that it, you can probably listen to me and trust me. Um, I am a social listening field, cultural and social strategist. I've been doing social stuff since 2006. I've been working freelance since 2009. I do <clears throat> projects across the board, but I work a lot on entertainment, fandom and community projects. And I'm a big fan of working with brands who are trying to make the world a better place. So today we're gonna cover as much as we can. Um, Clean talk is a huge, huge, huge topic, as you'll see. So I've tried to pull out some of the more interesting insights, but we're going to be talking about um, clean talk. We're going to be looking at clean talk 101, doing some deeper dives into some of the trends and sub trends that have emerged during the search. We're going to be looking at brands who actually understand this space. Um, we're going to then be looking at how I connected clean talk back to culture as a broader look. I also wanted to look a little bit at um, how clean talk was manifesting on different platforms outside of TikTok. We're going to look at cleaning as self-care. Um, and then at the end of the deck, we're going to do a section on how I use social to spot broader trends, not just social media trending topics, but big, broad trends that work across um, a variety of platforms. And then there's time for some questions. So. <clears throat> the first question, um, what is clean talk? Clean talk is basically um, TikTok's cleaning talk. <clears throat> it's um, where users are creating and sharing videos that are related to cleaning, organizing, and maintaining a tidy living space. So the content on clean talk runs a massive range, but includes cleaning tips, product recommendations, cleaning transformations, and a lot of general advice on keeping a clean and organized home. The reason that you should be interested or bothered about this is because on TikTok alone, um, Clean Talk currently has 4.1 million videos and 130.5 billion views, which is a reasonable amount of content and engagement. <clears throat> so to understand and position this search, so. I knew if, if there were any particular points that I should be looking at where, where things were happening. I used Uscan search initially to look for global instances of both clean talk and house cleaning um, for the last year 
across all platforms. So over the last year, there were over 30 million mentions uh, around these two topics across um, all platforms, which is obviously a lot of content. <clears throat> but the other thing that it helped me realize is that Clean Talk's pretty consistent throughout the year and it doesn't really have any massive spikes or key moments. So I was able to set up a search without having to focus on a particular time of year or, or worry about missing a key moment. So getting into clean talk. Um, I wanted to keep this search as simple as possible and just look at clean talk itself, not look at the broader cleaning trends across other platforms. So this is specific to clean talk. But I also wanted to understand if clean top as a tag had spread to other platforms as well. So the search, very simple, just clean talk across social media platforms. Um, I ran the search from January the 1st this year up until now across all social. In that time, I tracked 482,000 mentions. I was able to track 152,000 total authors. And that produced 705 million engagements, which is quite a good mention to engagement ratio. Um, so yeah, clean talk, <clears throat> definitely a thing that people are into. So I wanted to firstly understand what the key platforms were. Obviously, TikTok was going to be the biggest platform. Clean Talk was born on TikTok and is a talk-based tag. Um, but, but TikTok still only got 89% of the mentions that we recorded. Um, looking at where it was happening on other platforms, there were almost 24,000 mentions on Pinterest, over 10,000 on Instagram. And that's from Instagram data, which obviously is not the easiest to track. So it's likely much higher. Um, What's interesting is that we are seeing clean talk as a TikTok community be used on various social platforms outside of TikTok. So where is it happening in the world? I wanted to look at it first in terms of country groups and then the specific countries that were generating the most uh, content. And all of this is looking at mentions and not engagements. So one of the key takeaways is that clean talk is happening globally. Um, the US, however, accounts for the vast majority of the conversation, but the UK is really punching above its weight in terms of this trend. If you look at the UK, I think there's 70, I think it was 78 or 79,000 mentions were coming from the UK which is a, quite a high percentage of the search given the size of the UK population when we compare it to the US population. Um, and then we also saw Brazil having quite a high number of mentions considering a lot of the time uh, it's not English language. Um, Germany and Canada also came in with a similar amount of posts as well. So, but we did see it manifesting across basically every corner of the globe. And the thing that I like to do next when I'm doing a social search is just to then get a good idea of who the overall audience is before I start deep diving into specific sub trends and trying to understand the differences there. So as you'll be aware, if you do social listening, we're only ever allowed to access demographic data for a really for not the entire audience. So I always take this data with like, a little bit of a pinch of salt and use it more as a steer and less as a set in stone. So looking at our search in particular, we can see that females massively outnumber the males in this audience, but it's actually other and community that is the largest percentage. Um, also in terms of age, uh, our data shows that although this is very much perceived as a Gen Z trend and TikTok is very much perceived as a Gen Z platform, the data that we've been able to access shows that it's primarily younger millennials who are driving the trend. Um, just again, to reiterate, remember this, is, this isn't the whole picture, it's just what we can see in terms of audience data. Um, 
It's also possible that this was a much younger trend initially when TikTok was more Gen Z focused as a platform. But as more and more millennials flick, sorry, flocked to TikTok, they've amassed bigger followings themselves. So um, they've also begun to dominate the clean talk trend. And then potentially another reason that we're seeing many more millennials in this trend than Gen Z is that Gen Z are moving out later and later and later, and most of them are still living in their parents' homes because of the housing crisis. So they are probably less likely to be doing their own cleaning than younger millennials who likely are at least renting a house out elsewhere, if not homeowners themselves. Um, I then like to look at audience interests just to get an idea of who they are as a people. It really helps me understand um, and contextualize what I'm seeing. Um, so looking at the audience interests, the most used audience descriptor was mom with almost 20,000 uses. Um, and then when you look at the rest of the audience interests, it is an incredibly female list um, with wife, beauty and fashion all being the kind of next biggest uh, interest groups next to mom. And then we're also seeing like makeup in there as well, family, travel, dogs. There is technology and do it yourself. It's not all like super traditionally female focused, but we are seeing a lot of those trends because there were so many mom and wife trends, um, sorry, mom and wife interests in this group. I wanted to check that there wasn't a lot of kind of um, right wing trad wife content that had been in inserted into clean talk, but there were like under a hundred mentions of trad wife in the entire search. So this is still, this is still quite a centrist audience and it's not, um, there's from what I could tell anyway, there was not a lot of uh, right wing disinformation uh, being pushed into the clean talk community. So thinking, <clears throat> sorry, thinking now about the key themes, um, so I, I come to the key themes by initially doing um, a lot of desperate research and then doing some manual analysis of the initially the first month or two of data and then looking back throughout the year to put together Boolean strings around the themes that I'm seeing emerging. So the first and biggest theme that I saw was um, ASMR, which accounted for over 93,000 posts. Um, clean with me as is just a hashtag, but it was almost as popular as ASMR. I also looked at um, satisfying content. Um, we'll go into this in a little more detail throughout the deck, but satisfying is kind of part of the oddly satisfying trend where um, users are watching content basically that 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 is not just ASMR content, but it's content that they find satisfying to watch. There's also a lot of motivational content on uh, in clean top. Then we saw content that was primarily around house and home cleaning, and then hacks, which I expected to be much higher, has actually really decreased in volume over the last year to be the sixth most popular talking point. Um, Unsure of the reason why. Potentially, there's only so many hacks in the world. Um, yeah, those were the biggest themes that I saw emerge. Um, and now I wanted to do look a little deeper at some sub trends. So the less talked about but still important uh, trends that we were seeing emerging, and often this is where we see kind of the more interesting little nuggets appear. Um, that are on their way up that we're then able to use in social strategies and content strategies um, to ensure that we can ride the wave on the way up. So um, the biggest subtrend I found was sponge squeezing. We're going to talk about this in much more detail in a, in a little while. Um, next to sponge squeezing, the reset had an almost equal amount of mentions. Again, we're going to talk about that a little further in the, in the deck. Um, then came deep cleaning. Now, <clears throat> deep cleaning, I thought about combining with another trend, 
but it's actually ha having looked at the data and done some pretty um, thorough analysis, deep clean is actually a theme in its own right. There's actually a lot less crossover with the reset and with satisfying than I originally expected that there would be. Um, and then finally, because this is one of the things that I wanted to look into in this report is um, this is just tags that are actually tagged, this, sorry, this is just posts that are actually tagged either like self-care, mental health, anything along those lines that I put in Babelian. But self-care gets quite a small amount of conversation within this search. Um, but as we go through the deck, you'll begin to understand that it's actually all about self-care, although that's not being talked about candidly or tagged. So I then like to look at the difference between the amount of engagement per topic and the amount of mentions per topic <clears throat> to see if there are any anomalies. So with this search, a lot of the um, engagement and the mentions kind of matched up, like ASMR had the most mentions, ASMR had the most engagement. We would expect that. Um, so the kind of the outlier here was motivational content, where motivational um, content got, generated 20 more engagements than satisfying since the beginning of year, although they had a very similar amount of mentions. Um, so this, plus the incredibly high levels of engagement that were around clean with me, um, suggests that TikTok users are more interested in using TikTok to motivate them to clean their houses than just to watch others clean their houses. So it seems that people are going to TikTok to watch motivational content so they feel either feel bad about themselves and get up and clean their houses or they can clean along with other people as kind of so they don't feel as isolated. So now that I've got a bigger picture of what's happening, where, um, who is talking about what, what the key themes are, what some of the sub uh, themes are, I then wanted to understand how that has changed over the last <clears throat> six months. So I find it really useful at this point to use USCAN's trending word function. So I can understand which keywords are stable and which keywords are trending up. This is super useful for me when I'm trying to future-proof a social content strategy. Um, so I don't start creating content or include content pillars or themes around trending topics that are already on their way down. So one of the things that I found most interesting in looking at this feature is that clean talk itself is the key trending word and has increased over a thousand percent in use since 2022 on TikTok, which is um, obviously quite a steep rise. And then outside of this, we're also seeing the rise of Sudsy, which um, is a real thing. Um, and again, taps into the calming, relaxing ASMR trend. So I find this a really useful way to get to grips with how the search is changing over time and what, what I need to pay more attention to in the future. And then I like to look at the hashtag analysis. So I won't, if it's not a TikTok specific search, I won't usually look at hashtag analysis because it tends to be only brands that are using um, hashtags on sort of Twitter type social platforms. But TikTok is still extremely hashtag happy. So this technique is actually really useful in helping identify sub communities that you might not otherwise have known about unless you were already an active clean talk participant. So in this case, it is sponge squeezing. Again, we are going to come back to sponge squeezing very soon. I then wanted to understand when people were cleaning, both in terms of the days that they were cleaning and the time of day. Um, understanding this positioning helps us know when we can talk to people or if there are particular pain points or user needs that are not being met. So <clears throat> people do use a specific time or day to talk about clean top. Um, the weekend is mentioned almost twice as often as any of the weekdays. 
which kind of tracks we expect that most people work during the week. Although given the amount of stay at home mom and mum content, I it was quite strange to me to see as much weekend content as there was. Um, looking at the weekday content, almost all of the weekday content was around Monday. Um, one of the reasons that we saw so much weekend content is um, that the Sunday resets, which is part of the bigger reset trend, is massive um, in clean talk. And we're going to talk more about the Sunday reset later. And then thinking about what time of day uh, people were talking about um, clean talk. It, surprisingly, it was evening and nighttime that came out as the most mentioned times for people to be cleaning. There were slightly fewer morning cleaning posts and basically no posts about cleaning in the afternoon. So these two posts opposite are from many of the mums that are talking about how they clean at night when everyone else has gone to bed. So how could this be useful for you? Um, understanding what time the audience cleans allows you to think about uh, creating products or messaging that responds to their pain points. For example, now that we know that there are moms that are cleaning in the middle of the night, um, we, we could start thinking about calming cleaning scented products for night cleaning or um, creating relatable content that resonates with the tired moms of TikTok or uh, cleaning products that are particularly quiet so they don't wake the family. These are the kind of insights that we can, these, these are the kind of content ideas or R&D ideas we can start to think about when we understand what the pain points are for the community that we are trying to reach. Um, I wanted to understand who the biggest influencers in this space were. If I was doing a, this project for a client, I would have identified specific influencers within the subtopic they wanted to speak about the most. But because this was a general overview, I just wanted to understand the biggest influencers in space. So these three influencers I've identified were the uh, most engaging influencers in Clean Top this year. Um, all three of them are parents. Um, this, however, doesn't mean that they're not Gen Z. Um, it's easy to forget, I think, that the oldest of uh, the Gen Z cohort are turning 27 this year. So a lot of them are of uh, like parents themselves already. However, looking at the top three influencers here, two out of three are millennials and definitely not Gen Z. Um, only 8% of the posts that we tracked were tagged with mom keywords. So although these, although a lot of the, um, the content is from parents, not all of the content is being tagged as moms. So they're not talking as much about being moms. There was Operation Nikki. Um, she's got 3.4 million followers and a 7% engagement rate. One of the things that's interesting about Operation Nikki is she has multiple affiliate stores. And when you watch her videos, she will have tagged everything in the video in her affiliate stores. So she's, she's an extremely astute clean talk influencer. Joey Fu is a stay at home dad influencer who's got 1.4 million subscribers and an insane 24% engagement rate. Um, one of the things that emerged during this uh, study was that although the audience is incredibly female, whenever there's a man doing the cleaning in the clean sort of videos, they lose their minds. The engagement is always through the roof. So Joey Fu has this insane engagement rate. Um, I think partly just because he's a stay at home dad who is tasked with managing the house himself. And then finally, we've got Amanda um who is a gen z high school dropout mum who has a nine percent engagement rate 1.7 million followers and shares like a lot of her life stories as she is doing her cleaning so she's more of a kind of personality type influencer that cleans and does diy than um a straight clean talk influencer while we're talking about Gen Z, I just wanted to stop and mention that 
I don't actually put a lot of stock in demographic data. I'm much more interested in mindset and behaviors. And that's the way that I'll typically cluster audience groups and design my social strategies. However, when I'm looking at really big data sets, um, generational groups are a really easy and understandable entry point to help us understand that data before we look deeper. So I will lean on them more than I would like to <laughs> usually during this uh, analysis because it is a broad data set and it's a really easy way to, um, to make sure that we all understand what we're talking about. As, as I start to dive deeper and I've got more audience data, I will tend towards interests over generations. Um, <clears throat> I then wanted to look at aspects, um, which is really useful when I'm doing product focused searches, um, which obviously clean talk is. There's a lot of product in clean talk. Um, aspects really helps me quickly understand what the community thinks about the products um, and whether that's positive or negative without me having to set up like manual searches within uh, clean, within my broader search and create massive epic booleans to understand better. So in this search, I was able to tell that smell and functionality were the two biggest positive aspects and that they were much more important to the community than design or price. Um, using the built-in functionality is a super good way to explore the topic and understand where I should focus my attention. Uh, much the same way, I used logo identification. Um, I didn't set up logos as I was setting up the search here because it wasn't for a particular client to understand their social share of voice. It was just broader. So I'm still able to see logos come up in the uScan search, just not as many as if I had uploaded my own logos to be able to look at them. It's really useful, particularly on TikTok, to be able to see the products that people are using that they are not tagging. And as we move more into a short form video landscape, this function is going to become more and more and more valuable. So notable cleaning brands that were identified within the logo identification search where we saw the US laundry de detergent gain, we saw Dyson, we saw Fabuloso, Lenore and Tide. And from the analysis here, we can see that the Dyson logo content was generating the highest levels of engagement per post. Right, just gonna drink a tiny bit of water and then we're gonna go into the deeper dives. So <clears throat> the biggest um, the biggest topic that I saw in our search, as you saw earlier in the deck, was ASMR. ASMR-based key best feature in over 20% of the posts analyzed, which is a lot of posts. Um, and also they generated 198 million engagements since January. Um, Sponge squeezing is the biggest subtrend in our ASMR category. And this is also where we start to see mentions of brands. Um, interestingly, we see mentions of satisfying here, but we don't see any mentions of calming. So even though it's ASMR content that is very much based around the idea of making your brain calm down, there's no mentions of that in our keywords or hashtag word cloud, but we are seeing a lot of people talk about it in satisfying ways. So you will not be able to hear this sponge <laughs> squeezing video, but when this is shared, you will be able to click links uh, to be able to hear <laughs> the sounds that are being made. But basically sponge screaming, sorry, sponge squeezing is responsible for 38% of the ASMR posts in our search. Um, it's basically like an offshoot of all the crushing and slime videos. Sponge squeezing is an ASMR subtopic that basically does what it says on the tin. This was the most engaging post within our search by Pine Baby ASMR. Um, it was liked 350,000 times. It got almost 2,000 comments. It was saved over 22,000 times. And 5,000 people shared it outside of TikTok. 
So the second uh, topic that I wanted to look into quickly was clean with me, which is the hashtag basically clean with me. Uh, clean with me content these days is pretty much just cleaning tutorials. This ranges from pro cleaners doing hoarder houses to people doing like a little light mopping of the hallway. Um, clean with me is where we see the majority of the affiliate links as well. Um, there are loads of Amazon storefronts under this tag, but it's Shopify links that generate the most engagement, suggesting that in the clean with me uh, subtopic, it's smaller businesses that are reaping the benefits and not bigger businesses. There was a huge crossover um, between Clean With Me and motivational content. Um, Clean With Me accounted for almost 18% of our overall posts. And then there was a 38% crossover between Clean With Me and motivational content. So it's useful to understand that when you're thinking about your own content strategy and how and why people are engaging with the content that they are. Um, satisfying contents. Um, this fits into part of the broader cross internet, like oddly satisfying trend. Obviously, obviously that oddly satisfying is uh, one of the larger subreddits as well. This manifests in clean talk on a variety of ways. So over 50% of the satisfying content was also tagged as ASMR because ASMR rules clean talk. Um, alongside that, we also saw a lot of before and after videos. People love a before and after shot in terms of satisfying content. Satisfying content is also, you'll see from the pictures I've been selected here from the uh, screen grabs of TikToks, it's where we see the most grossed content. Um, so this is the type of, this is the part of clean talk where we see hoarder houses, we see pimple popping, we see air vent cleaning, we see like dirty car detailing, drain unblocking content runs the entire gambit there. Moving into something that's a little bit nicer, um, the reset. Um, there were 28,500 mentions of the research in our sorry the reset in our search so we're not one of the biggest topics it's definitely a large topic but what is the reset um the reset's part of the wider and not date specific trend around a sunday reset which is basically a full deep cleaning of a space effectively resetting for a new week again there's a huge crossover with the clean with me trend um the concept of the sunday reset is reshaping the mundane task of home cleaning into a ritual of self-care. It uh, resonates more with young generations. Uh, the trend has been uh, gaining traction and continues to grow across all social platforms, not just TikTok. Um, and it's kind of ind uh, indicative of a broader shift towards wellness and self-improvement. This is basically turning what used to be a chore into a routine and a self-care practice. Um, so I was interested to see if there was any combination of the Sunday reset and the other big TikTok trend of the everything shower, uh, part of the clean girl trend. And there was definitely crossover here. So what we saw is it's quite common for TikTokers to dedicate an entire day on Sunday to resetting the house and then taking everything shower at the end of that. Uh, the everything shower is basically, for those that don't know, a shower that takes an extremely long time <laughs> and allows you to do like a hair mask, a body mask, shaved legs, uh, take some me time all while the water is continuing to run, which does not feel incredibly environmentally friendly. Um, the everything shower trend uh, encapsulates like holistic approach to the daily shower routine. So it repositions it from uh, just a cleaning experience to a ritual for mental health and emotional well-being. So we're taking the shower from uh, 
just something that you have to do to something you actively look forward to enjoy luxuriating the same way that the Sunday reset takes the chore of having to clean the house on a Sunday and turns that into a ritual and something to be enjoyed. Um, so seeing them paired is not weird, but it, it is interesting. It's very much about kind of bookmarking the end of the week and preparing for a new week. Again, this is something that brands could probably capitalize on if they wanted to get involved. So brands who get it. Um, I Out of all of the conversational analysis that I did, Scrub Daddy was the thing that came up the most. You'll know from doing social listening searches yourselves, I assume that we don't see brand content that often on um, during social searches unless people are complaining. But here, Scrub Daddy um, accounted for... Um, almost 2% of our overall search. So that's almost a 2% share of voice for the whole of Clean Top, which is kind of mind blowing for a brand. Um, and one of the reasons for this, Scrub Daddy are really good at TikTok. They've got over 4 million followers on their own platform. They encourage users to post UCG by sharing the hashtag in their bio. They do a really good blend of trending and meme content to connect with a younger audience. But then they also have a kind of extremely relatable faceless dude that they use as the voice of Scrub Daddy. Um, I thought that was quite notable because this whole space is dominated by females and they've got like a dude as the voice of Scrub Daddy. Like notably, they also have Scrub Money, Mommy scrub sponges, but they've stuck with Scrub Daddy as the way to go with relatable content. The key takeaway here is that Scrub Daddy have somehow made cleaning sponges cool. One of the reasons that I didn't want to do a search into the types of things people were using to um, clean, like mops and sponges and cloths, is that everything would have come back as a sponge because between sponge clean, sorry, sponge squeezing and Scrub Daddy, a lot of S's in this. Um, there's so much sponge conversation in Clean Talk that there would have been no point in, in looking at anything else. Looking at a UK brand that is doing a similar job in terms of engaging the community, UK indie brand Elbow Grease have been building a TikTok community for years and that's paid off for them as well. Um, they've got over 400,000 followers. They paste extremely relatable content. But again, their content is very much pitched more at the millennial and mum market and less Gen Z-ish. Um, I thought what was interesting here is that although Elbow Grease do very cost-effective products that um, can verge on the kind of the more toxic end, they're definitely the ones that's, that you need to wear gloves to be using. Even Elbow Grease have just released their first natural range this year, just with citric acid and vinegar and baking soda, et cetera. So we're seeing that shift even in the more value focused market to a more um, natural product. Uh, one of the things that I noticed while doing this analysis is that bigger brands are not rising to the challenge. Um, I looked at bigger brands. I tried to look for a lot of the cleaning brands on TikTok. And so many of them either didn't have a presence or did have a presence, but weren't doing very much with it at all. Um, the P&G brands who have a Super Savvy Me channel on Instagram don't have a TikTok. Um, Dettol have got a TikTok, but they've never posted anything. Um, Sif got 13.2 thousand followers. Astonish, I've got 8,000 followers. Method, one of the biggest eco brand cleaning brands in the world, who did a, um, uh, I can't remember which partnership they did earlier this year, but they've only got 15.2 thousand followers. And I understand that on TikTok, followers is not the same as having likes and having views on your videos, but they also, these brands are not seeing high levels of views and likes on their videos. So it feels like there's quite a big missed opportunity here for them. The other thing that I found quite surprising during the search is that sustainable and vegan products were not talked about very much at all. 
I only saw, I saw under 500 posts tagged vegan in the entire search. Um, when I looked at sustainability and green environmental keywords, that wasn't much better. It was only like 1500. And then most of the bigger green brands, uh, they also don't have a TikTok presence or they're not doing a lot with it. So again, we're seeing that missed opportunity replicated in the environmental and sustainability space here, um, especially given the age of the community on TikTok. It feels like this is a space that they that these types of brands would be able to own quite easily. So I looked at the products people were using. Um, there weren't a lot of brand specifics. We did see Ajax, obviously Scrub Daddy. We saw Pink Stuff and Lemon Comet come up. Um, there were mentions of other brands, but there were no like dominant brands within this space with the exception of Scrub Daddy. Last year, however, Unilever announced a TikTok partnership around Clean Talk. Um, they partnered with key creators. They created an editorial content series in the UK um, around the festival of cleaning. So I don't have any stats on how this impacted sales. What I can say is that the leading Unilever cleaning brand of Sith was only mentioned in 0.5% of the posts that I tracked since January this year globally which is a tenth of the social share of voice of Scrub Daddy. Um, and as you saw, Scrub Daddy are very active on the platform. Sif, on the other hand, are not. So it's super good that they partnered with TikTok. And as I said, I don't know what the sales results of this were. But from my point of view, having looked at this data and having seen this with a variety of uh, clients over the years, you are usually better off actually building your brand and creating more of a community around that on, on TikTok rather than just relying on creator content um, for longevity, at least. Um, I think because using just creators and then not really having a brand presence that backs that up lacks the authenticity that people are looking for in this space. Right, um, connecting clean talk with culture. So this is where I start to move away from just social listening data. Um, I want to ensure that I've given my clients a future facing view. So I use a variety of trends platforms that allow me to understand what is trending up outside of just straight social so that I'm getting a 360 view of what's happening. So here I looked at uh, the emerging trends that were coming out uh, around cleaning and you'll see that a bunch of the emerging trends were things that we were seeing on TikTok but some of them were happening elsewhere so this just allows me to plug in any gaps when I'm looking to create strategies for clients um, and ensure that I'm getting a 360 digital view. Interestingly uh, emphasis on kitchen cleaning is expected to grow this year and foam cleansers are obviously also on their way up. Outside of TikTok, um, we saw uh, mentions across, these were the four biggest social platforms that had the highest amount of clean talk specific mentions. Um, unsurprisingly, ASMR leads on both YouTube and Instagram, given that they are both platforms that compete with TikTok for short form video audience. Um, although Pinterest also offers short form video, they're way more uh, focused on static images. And we saw house and home topic dwarf everything else on Pinterest, which again, unsurprising. Um, Facebook, oddly, uh, is a complete outlier in that hacks was the dominant conversation on Facebook. Finally, I'm just gonna do a tiny bit on cleaning and self-care and then we'll move into questions because I did not realize how long it would take me to go through this data. Um, so the first thing to know to notice about the self-care trend on TikTok is it's not being tagged as self-care. There were under 7,000 posts tagged with my self-care keywords. Um, and then looking at the visuals here of the things that were tagged as self-care, it's very much like the pink me time bubble bath idea of self-care that millennials kind of defined, the slightly hygge, like... <clears throat> champagne, um, pillows, that kind of a vibe, 
Whereas the Gen Z self-care vibe is very much more about an active kind of mental health, taking care of yourself actively um, type of self-care. But um, when we dial back and stop looking just at trending topics and start to look at the behaviors and the desires that are driving this content that we're seeing, we begin to understand that it really is all about self-care. So clean, clean talks playing into three far bigger cultural trends that are happening. We've seen a desire for like body-based and physical work make a comeback um, because we live in an online world where information jobs are being threatened by, by, sorry, by AI. So cleaning as a job, like loads of other manual professions is currently being like elevated by Gen Z and TikTok and the value there is being redefined as we've seen from the huge amount of ASMR content, the desire for calming content at an all time high. People wanna break from doom scrolling and they're using satisfying and ASMR videos to calm over active minds. And then finally, we've got this desire for control. Um, the desire to clean your house, which sits very op opposite the very TikTok trend of goblin mode, is really a desire to exert the control that you actually do have over your life. Jobs are unstable, the economy is unstable, housing is unstable, but with clean top, you can control your tiny corner of the world. And there's also something of like the humble brag built into um, this part of clean top as well. So when we look at all of these themes together, they point towards self-care in a really big way. We've got prioritizing mental health, physical health, and then focusing on only what you can control all wrapped up into clean talk. So clean talk really is all about self-care. So the takeaways for clean talk are um, clean talk really loves relatable content. Uh, the biggest influencers on clean talk have huge personalities and share personal stories while they clean. It's extremely female focused, but male content is very, very popular. Um, over 5% of the clean talk content analyzed is tagged mums of TikTok. Mums are a big thing on, TikTok, on uh, clean talk. ASMR is really big business for clean talk. Um, clean talk's definitely driven by self care, but it doesn't talk about it candidly. Small brands are faring way, bigger, way better than bigger brands. Building a community is still in extremely important. And most brands are missing out on a really big opportunity here. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to stop there so we've got time for questions. Yeah, Kim, thank you so much for sharing your expertise uh, with the Clean Talk. I uh, always admire how you not just spot trends and research it, but you always try to include and to, to spot the bigger picture, some cultural and social aspects yeah great Thank so you. using these insights i believe brands uh could boost their strategies for marketing for sales yeah <laughs> so guys uh let's our q and day session begin it's a unique uh, opportunity unique chance for you to ask kim some questions and uh, actually we already have one uh kim do you see it or is better mm -hmm. for me to read it out loud? yeah i see it so I looked at the time that was mentioned in the content. Um, I did not look at the metadata because uh, people tend to post at specific times of the day to garner more engagement, but the actual content, that the way that they describe the content is when they're actually doing the cleaning. So yeah, I looked specifically at uses of morning or evening or the time of day. Yeah, you know, speaking of uh, weekdays, it was super surprising for me that uh, uh, besides the weekends, uh, Monday was uh, one of the top mentioned day uh, for cleaning because for me, Monday is super hard and <laughs> not cleaning at all. It yeah. tapped into that, yeah. the Monday motivation trend. I think there was quite a lot of motivating content. So yeah, um, there was a, a lot of talk on Mondays about, I think it was for people that don't do the Sunday reset. They use Monday as their like starting to, starting to get into uh, work. Yeah. So guys, uh, think about some questions. 
And while you're doing this, I uh, have a question for you, Kim. Okay. Uh, how did you find this trend for research? It's uh, just popped up while you scrolled the, your uh, social media um, news or you have another approach? Um, it, so I spend... <laughs> I spent so long just doing social listening. Like I am continually social horizon scanning. So yeah, I had seen it come up a few years ago. And then also I did a deep dive because I'd done some work with a client um, in the UK around the cleaning space and became quite fascinated by clean talk because it's, uh, I really like, like I'm quite into oddly satisfying content myself. I'm not an ASMR person, but I, I love an oddly satisfying video. So uh, yeah, that was kind of my path in. Ready to get it. So let me check the chat. Okay, Kim, what is your favorite functionality at your scan uh, that helps you spot in trends and uh, do your research? Mm, you scan search I think um I if I spot a trend elsewhere or I sort of organically start to see a theme emerge I usually go to you scan search and then do a quick fact check of um what's happened over the last year if there are any peaks and troughs like which platforms are the most important who the core community are so that I can get a feel for like whether it's worth doing a deep dive into. So yeah, I use you scan search about a hundred times a day. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Functionality for the actual So I believe Question. that we don't have any questions? One, oh. one more has disappeared. Jessica? Uh -huh. um, I think that this was cleaning specific because green beauty brands do quite well on TikTok. I think it's about the positioning, the audience that you're speaking to. Like a lot, I think green brands in general feel really comfortable on Instagram because there's this perception that Instagram is like it's curated content it is it's not as authentic brands feel comfortable in that space because it's the nearest to like brand advertising um, and particularly greener brands which tend to be on the higher end of the scale they don't know how to create authentic content it's not just memes a lot of the time so I think that there's a space for green brands uh, on TikTok, but they need to figure out their tone of voice and what their brand personality is on that platform. And that is something that a lot of them grapple with and find quite difficult, which I think is, I think there's an appetite there within the communities and within, and we see even in beauty, like the smaller brands eating the bigger brands dinner because they've created content and a community that, that works on TikTok and bigger brands seem to have more difficulty doing that. Cool. Thank you for your answer. No worries. Yeah, so guys, um, you have some time to ask your questions and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you so much. It was super nice seeing you. <laughs> we were super happy to have uh, such an expert as Kim today. So yeah, thank Thanks you so guys. Much. Thank you. Yeah, I wish everyone a lovely rest of the day. So yeah, have a good week. We'll share, yeah, share the recording with you.